Hey guys, Jessica here with the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are in my kitchen, which rarely happens anymore because we're doing the Longevity Junkie homemade bone broth recipe. So if you are not familiar, this is the Forever Dog book. I will have it linked in the description below. This is possibly one of the most incredible books I have ever read. And right here, I think right here, yes. Page 242 is the Longevity Junkie Bone Broth recipe, but it is actually public. It's a public recipe because they have it up on their Facebook and Instagram. You can get this. I'm actually gonna put this up on the screen here for a little while so you can see it. If you need to take a screenshot, you can go ahead and do that. But here's what we've got. All right, guys, I've got it all laid out here. Now, I am gonna warn you that my grocery store didn't have a lot of the organics. It didn't have exactly what I wanted. Do the best you can, which is what I'm doing, but we're gonna make do with what I got, okay? So we're gonna start out with a free range chicken. Now, they want you to have an organic one. I could not find organic chicken at my grocery store, so I got the best I could. Fresh, natural, no antibiotics, young, whole roasting chicken. It has the giblets and the neck in here. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good one, but it's not organic. If you can get organic, get organic. Then we're gonna go with, we've got, we're going to use a half a cup of cilantro. Now, let me tell you, this is a bone broth unlike any other bone broth I have ever made before in a very, very big way. I'm gonna tell you about that in just a minute. If you want a plain, simple, quick and easy, instant pot and done bone broth, I have another video on my channel. I will link that in the description for you. But we're going to go with some cilantro. If you can get it organic, get it. We're also going to use some parsley, fresh chopped parsley. If you can get organic, get it. Um, medicinal mushrooms it asks for. I couldn't find medicinal at my grocery store. I just got regular white button mushrooms, um, just like this. So that's what we're gonna be using today. Fresh garlic, four cloves. Now, hear me out on this, okay? First of all, <laughs> I didn't create this recipe, so don't come at me, but garlic is not horrible for dogs. Now, in extreme doses, Yes, it can be very dangerous for dogs, but in small amounts, it can have quite a few benefits. So garlic in small amounts is actually quite beneficial for dogs. One thing I wanna tell you about garlic is that when you're buying your gar garlic, first of all, don't ever get garlic from China. And if you cannot find on the label where it's from, you wanna look for this, okay? So right here, the like butt of the garlic, you see all the little like roots and everything are here. If that is cut off, it's because it came from China. And here's the deal. For the most part, I'm not saying every single one, but for the most part, overwhelmingly, the reason why this butt can't be on the garlic that comes from China is because they grow their garlic in sewage. And this right here has a bunch of contaminants and stuff. The only way they can get their garlic imported into the US is to cut this off. Look it up. Let me. There's like there's a documentary on Netflix. You want to be grossed out? Watch that documentary. <laughs> documentary on Netflix on garlic because oh my goodness, we only get garlic made grown in the U.S. We can get it from Gilroy. That's wonderful. Or wherever you live, whatever country you may be living in, just don't get it from China, okay? Because they grow their garlic in sewage. <sighs> okay. Now we're gonna go with a half a cup of cruciferous veggies. I chose broccoli. You could also use cabbage or Brussels sprouts, but broccoli was the easiest for me. Again, organic if you can get it. We're also going to use one tablespoon of unfiltered raw apple cider vinegar. Um, I did not, I was not able to find raw at my grocery store. If you can get raw with the mother in it, that is the absolute best. This has some stuff in it, but it's not raw. So if you can get raw, get raw. And then we're going to use some pink Himalayan sea salt. That's what we got guys. So here's the difference in this bone broth versus any other bone broth I have ever made before. I actually reached out to um, the Forever Dog book page on Facebook. Uh, there's a, a page, there's a group, there's a couple of different groups. And Dr. Uh, Karen Becker and Rodney Habib, who wrote this book, have been working with uh, Bee Adams. She's 
incredible and does so much behind the scenes for the Forever Dog book. And she actually answered me because I had a question about this. Every other bone broth recipe that I have ever made, I strain it. At, at the end, when I'm done, I strain everything and just the broth is what I give to my dogs. Now, if I've done a really good job, it'll congeal a little bit. If you've ever seen that kind of almost jellied <laughs> texture to a bone broth, you've done excellent. But this recipe actually calls for you to, we'll do this in, in, in a little bit, in the magic, the magic of editing, right? You're not gonna have to wait the four hours I'm gonna have to wait with the magic of editing. We're actually gonna mix up a lot of this stuff together and create kind of a bisque. So to me, this is more of a bisque and less of a broth, but still incredibly, I mean, possibly even more nutritious and beneficial than the other bone broths that we have created in the past. So that is the huge difference in this bone broth versus other bone broths I have done on my channel before. Again, I will um, put this up on the screen. If you haven't already got your screenshot of it, here it is, and let's get going. All we're gonna do, this is really, really simple. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our chicken, our whole chicken, we're gonna put it in a pot, which I have over here on the stove, and we are gonna cover that with filtered water. Once we have that done, we're going to add all of our veggies and our apple cider vinegar and our sea salt. We're gonna add all of that to the pot. We're gonna let that simmer for four hours. Once that four hours is up, we're gonna come back, we are going to pull the chicken out, we're going to pull all the meat off of the bones, we're gonna discard the bones. Then we are going to take some of that meat and we're gonna put it away. <laughs> I'm gonna put some in the refrigerator to give Kim his treats, to give my dog his treats. Some of it I'm gonna go ahead and freeze because it's just gonna be too much for one small dog. Some of it I'm going to keep in with the broth and the veggies that are in the broth and we're gonna blend it all together. So let's get to it. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, I just wanna read to you really quickly why we're using some of these ingredients, why they developed this recipe the way they did. So the fresh cilantro is effective at binding heavy metals in the body, so the body can more effectively rid itself of heavy metals. The parsley is a natural blood detoxifier the medicinal mushrooms, which we're using regular button mushrooms, but medicinal mushrooms would be better. They provide glutathione, spermidine, ergo, and beta-glucans. The cruciferous veggies, which we're using broccoli today, these have high sulfur content needed for liver detoxification, so they're gonna aid the liver in helping to detoxify the body. The garlic, all right guys, garlic, high sulfur content, stimulates production of glutathione for liver detoxification. Here's what they say to do. Cover and simmer for four hours. Turn off stove. Now here's something optional that we can do. Add four tea bags if desired. Steep in broth for 10 minutes, then discard tea bags. Remove any remaining meat from bones and discard the bones. Puree the remaining meat, veggies, and liquid until a smooth gravy consistency. Remember I was telling you this is less of a broth and more of a bisque because we are actually gonna puree all of this together at the end. Freeze in individual portions. Ice cube trays work well. I am actually going to be storing these in some mason jars. So do whatever is gonna work best for you. I like to use mason jars to store things in my freezer, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Remove portion. Most standard trays are one ounce or portion or two tablespoons. Let thaw, so when you're feeding it, let thaw to room temperature or reheat to warm the broth prior to adding it to your dog's food. So that is what we're gonna be doing and haven't quite got to boiling yet. This is a big pot of water, but as soon as we do, I'm going to reduce the heat to simmer for four hours. Okay, so this has been going for a little over four hours. I did add, I was like adding water, like a lot of water to it. Um, probably more than I should have because it hasn't reduced a ton because I've been adding a lot of water to it. 
but it is time for me to take the chicken out. I've already started actually. I'm gonna turn this off and pull all of the chicken out. Let the chicken cool down a little bit so that I can pull all of the meat off of the bones and make sure we have no bones left in the pot. So my hands are delicate and my husband offered to <laughs> pick the chicken for me because it's still pretty hot. So he's going through and pulling all of the meat off the bones for me right now. And we are, I'll probably set some of this aside. Kim's getting some right there. I'll probably set some of this aside for Kim to have um, snacks the next couple of days. But don't keep meat in the freezer any longer than two or three days. Where's that? Piece of gristle, you may want to say something. Oh, there's gristle too. We don't want to keep that in there. We want to get rid of the gristle. And that's why you should do it by hand and not use, you know, fork, knife, tongs, all those wonderful things. Okay, so here is the immersion blender that we have. It's really incredible. I'm gonna go ahead and get the chicken and add it back in. I pulled a little bit of chicken out for my dog to snack on over the next couple of days. And we actually pulled some chicken out for us tonight too. <laughs> um, earlier in the process, we pulled about half of the chicken out for us to eat for dinner. So this is only about half of a chicken that's going back in. So I'm just gonna add it back into the pot here, a little bit at a time so it doesn't splash up on me. All right. And now we blend. So I would highly recommend letting this cool down first, but in the interest of time and filming, here we go. I've got my mason jar, I've got my canning funnel linked in the description below because this thing is awesome. And we are just going to start ladling in the bone broth, which I'm gonna call it a bone bisque because that's really what it is, it's a bisque. Sounds so much fancier. Uh, one tip I did mention in the beginning, this is for dogs. Do not feed this to your cats because it has garlic in it, but this is good for your dogs. And since we're freezing it, I am going to leave room at the top for the liquid to expand. Make sure you do that because you don't want busted mason jars in your freezer. We can either use our silicone molds to pre-portion it and freeze it like this, which for me is pretty darn messy, but we'll do one just so I can show you how to do it. Or this is my preference. I'm gonna put it in these mason jars, but I have a really cool tip for you. Hang on one second. So when I freeze my mason jars, I don't like using the metal lid because when I go to open it and it's frozen, it burns the heck out of my hand. So Ball makes these plastic lids that are freezer safe that fit they're made to go on your mason jars so this is what i use when i freeze in my mason jars i will have those lids linked below also this funnel this funnel is for canning because it has this larger opening this makes it so much easier to load the mason jars so i will link all of this in the description below all right guys, here we have it, our Longevity Junkie Bone Broth, which I'm calling more of a bisque because really that's what it is. So remember to label your jars with what's in them and the date you made them. Put as much as you need to in the freezer. Keep a, a few days worth in the fridge. That's all you need. That's all that really is gonna be able to withstand the refrigerator. Everything else goes in the freezer. I hope your dog enjoys it. And when you make this, make sure to take a picture, post it on Instagram, tag me, show me just how much your dog loves it. Don't forget the Forever Dog book is linked in the description below. I highly, highly recommend it. If you have a dog, you definitely need to read this book. And 
make some longevity junkie bone broth for your dog. All right, guys, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you are subscribed. I also hope to see you join the family over on Patreon where you get all new and exclusive content plus first look at content that goes live everywhere else. Make sure to check out the podcast, The Pet Parenting Reset, wherever you get your podcasts. And comment down below. Let me know if you like this video, if you're going to make it, if you have any questions about making it. It's actually pretty easy. As long as you're not making a video, that makes it harder. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Give your dog and your cat some extra love from me. Until next time, bye, guys. Bye.